Hello, this is Gata7, and today I'm going to teach you how to add vertex colors to Super Mario 64 DS. Now, you're probably wondering, why should I add vertex colors to your, mo to your model? Well, let me just show you an example. You can already see some big differences here. And if I move over to the toxic area, or to the sand area, or to the snowy area even, you can see that there is an indeed a big difference on how the level looks. And I don't know about you, but I personally believe the one on the left here to be a lot better overall. So that's why you want to add vertex colors to your level, as they give it some extra shading and detail that otherwise would not be present. So it's an instant way to make your models look that much better. So I'm going to show you in this tutorial how to do that. What you're going to need is Blender, Mario 64 DSC, your ROM, and Josh's Mario 64 BMD exporter, which I'll, I'll link in the description below. So once your ROM is open, you're going to want to open the level up that you want to edit. In this case, I want to open up Starshine Cove from Shining Stars DS. Now, we need to first find where the BMD is located. So if I go to Import Level Model, we can see it's Data Stage TBDeca D and TBDeca D All.BMD. So then if I go to the File System, Data Stage, and it's... Uh, TB Deca D. Now, if you don't see it in here, that's because it may be in one of the archives in which you'd have to search until you find one that has a stage. I know the Versus stage is, for example, this contains the Versus castle grounds or so. But in my case, I can just export this BMD. So I'm going to go to my tutorial folder. And I'm just going to call this Starshine No Shading BMD, just for it's a clear example. And now I'm going to open up Blender. Now the version of Blender you have to be using is 2.79. I'm going to use Windows 64 for my platform, but you still want to have Blender 2.79. If you don't, this will not work. All right. So let's go over some basic controls in Blender. Now right click is the default way to select, but I'm sure that's very uncomfortable and not intuitive for a lot of people here. So what you want to do is go into File, User Preferences, and if you want, go, and go to Select with Left. So now I'm going to show you how to install Josh's plugin. What you want to do is go into Add-ons, and you want to go install add-on from file tutorial and just select the blender mario 64 dsc zip file and then once you do that you should check it here and then make sure to save user preferences and then x out of that and then we can select with left click now and you're just going to want to delete everything on this scene. I'm left clicking stuff and hitting delete. You can also hit the X key to delete. And then once you do that, I'm, you want to go to file, import, NDS binary model format or BMD for short. So I'm going to open up my BMD right here by double clicking. And you can see that it looks uh, rather strange as it's not only sideways but it has no colors or anything so what you want to do now is you want to hit the R key for rotate and then you want to rotate along the X axis so hit the X key type in 90 to rotate it 90 degrees and hit enter and there you go you just rotated your model and now to get the sh and now here we go to the actual vertex coloring so you want to change the object mode to vertex paint then you want to change the solid thing here to material 
and you should now see how your level does look. I'm not sure what's with that white plane there, but that would explain why that wall is glitchy in game. And I'll have to modify or mess with that later. Luckily there's also an edit mode, so you can select your model and go to edit mode. And then you can also mess with faces here. So I can select a face, say I want to get rid of this uh, intrusive triangle right here. I can just hit the delete key and I want to see, I want to just say faces. Oh, there's another bad triangle here, so I'm just going to click that, delete faces. Alright, so now that I got rid of the evil triangles, I can actually move on to the actual vertex painting. So let me go over some blender controls real quick. So the zoom is used by the mouse wheel and if you hold the mouse wheel down you can rotate around along like this. If you hold shift and the mouse wheel you can pan and those are the basic controls. There's also something called alt, if you hold alt and F you can move your camera along a line. I'm not entirely sure how the Alt F works. It just seems to move when it wants to. Like it sometimes goes to the cursor, but other times it doesn't seem to. I don't know. It looks like it's trying to follow the course cursor. So I'm going to say Alt F tries to follow the cursor if there's not a wall in the way. So then. After you're done playing around with your controls and oh, another plane, maybe I can delete that real quick. You can go to edit mode, select the base, delete pieces. There we go. You can also edit faces and lines and however you want. Like you can't just do that. You can also draw faces too. As in, I can select the two vertices and mesh, I can faces, I can insert faces, flip normals, there's a lot you can do in Blender. But maybe another time, another day. So let's go through some basic vertex painting. So what you have here is your color wheel and your blend mode. I namely use on the mixed blend mode, but you have a ton you can choose from. You have your strength and radius, and I'm. What if I want to give the sand a little bluish tint, like that? I can just make everything look a bit bluer here. Oh, but as you can see, I got some on the wall, and I don't really want that. Well, I can hit Control Z to undo it. You can also hit Control Shift Z to redo. But one thing you can do is hit this button right here that allows for face masking. And now, what this does is you can select only certain faces using Shift A. And if I paint over here, it will only paint on certain triangles. And then if I hit A, I can, I'll can i deselect all, but if I hit A again, it'll select all, and I can just toggle between A. One thing I also like to use the masking for is to see where the vertices is are, because when I paint, see I'm trying to paint in the middle here, but nothing happens. See? Even though this whole thing is selected, but if I go in the corner, it paints because what vertex painting actually does is paint the vertices, not the actual planes or faces. Remember that. And so I'm just going to do some common things I like to do. I'm just going to fix that up later. But one thing that I definitely like doing is adding glow effects to my lava. Something like that. Just on the bottom vertice. Uh, oops, don't want to get some on that material there. Remember to get all the vertices so that your lava is glowing all the way. See, like that.
And if you don't like how the color turns out, you can just mess around with it over here. And you can modify properties such as the strength, like I can make it not as glowy or bright or so. And now one thing I don't have here that's also a common thing to do is when you have a black pit, like a pit or so that just leads to nowhere infinite, the easiest thing to do is just go all black and then just highlight it all the way. Of course I cannot do that because I do not have a black pit, but I do have a tunnel over here that I can play around with. I'm just using Alt F right now to go through it. So I can just do something like that. And already we have a nice black pit that stands out, but I want it to have some detail over here too, but not too dark so I can lighten it over a bit. So I can do something such as this. Really make this whole area a bit darker. So now you have the really dark pit over here but now it starts getting less and less dark as you go out and that's one of the cool things you can do and you can also do something like maybe not that dark but have a little Ooh. remember to always undo and redo as needed I'm just going to wrap around the edges here But remember to always use your tools because you have the ability to do this as well. To only select the faces you want. So remember to use your tools. Be sure to get all the triangles you want to shade. Oh, missed that one. And I can see I kind of have a little thing around the cave entry but I don't have it on the inside so what I should do is flip this around and start editing the inside to be a, to match the color of the outside remember to do that all you do is hit all shift and a no shift and click And there we go. Got a little tunnel. It's it's an improvement. And then as you can see here with that water, we are producing some nice glowing underwater effects. So if I try and get that blue from earlier, I can really make this area look nice. Just be sure to try and get the spots. See, look at how much of a difference we're making just because of a, some vertex painting. I'm just kind of showing you some common techniques I do when vertex painting. Like obviously what you do depends on your level and you have full freedom of what you can do. Like I'm going to go back and make this more bluer or so. And I'm going to fix that up of course. If you want to fix up a vertex pane, you just make your thing all white and then, or like a different color, and then you just find the troublesome plane. Then maybe line it up, and there, see? It's like nothing ever happened. And then, maybe one more thing I'll do or show you is to add shadows, as in, like, maybe on the inside of this uh, area here make a little shadow ooh maybe not that dark but maybe just a little on the ceiling and maybe just like a little on the inside here oh almost had the mask the wrong way well I did have the wrong way actually Maybe I don't want to color the... Ooh. If you hit Z by accident, just go into material mode. And yeah. 
The vertex painting is a slow and steady process. You want to get what you feel like looks good to you. But once you get a resolve that you're happy with, I guarantee you your model will look a lot better than when you first started if you put the necessary time and patience to it. So once you're finally done editing or vertex painting your model, what you want to do is go into object mode. It's important that you do that. Highlight your model by left clicking it. Oh, I didn't mean to actually move that. I'm just going to hit escape. And hit the R button. Type in negative 90. Hit enter. And there you go. Oh, see, I messed up there. I meant to hit R, then net, then X, then negative 90. Make sure to rotate along the X axis and not just the one the camera's facing. And now I'm going to export this model as a BMD. And I'm just going to call it some shading because I'm not done shading it. Export the BMD. All right, once that finishes, you just want to Right click on your VMD, hit replace, then do that, and I'm going to see how it looks in game. Alright, now that we're in the level, you can see that the sand that I modified there does look nicer. And if I try and swim down towards the cave... I actually normally have this area fenced off, but I unlocked it for the sake of this demonstration. If I go further and further inside the cave, it should get darker. And you can see it does. It does get darker the further I go. Well, unfortunately, Mario couldn't handle it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you all later.